This is Twit. Uh, all right, speed round. I'll start because I, I, there's a feature. It's an accessibility feature. As is often the case, Apple hides some of the best features under accessibility. It's the double and the triple tap. That is the coolest thing on the iPhone. You can assign it to different tasks. I presume at some point I'll be able to do Apple shortcuts with it. I think you I can. can. So yeah. that means I can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. freaking awesome. I, I was thinking about how um, when the uh, protests started happening, and, and I believe it was uh, Matthew Casanelli had made created a, yeah, a shortcut, shortcut that allows you yeah. to ask Siri to open up your camera, film something, and then share that that with friends or put it in um, a, a cloud storage. What if you didn't even have to yeah. say something? What if you could just double yeah. tap your yeah. phone and that exact same shortcut yeah. could pop up? You Isn't could awesome? subtly do it. Yeah. What are you excited yeah, about, Lori Gill? Oh, there's there's so much. You could it, do a few. Like, to, don't limit it. It's hard to unpack them all. Well, so I actually found out how much I really do love being able to customize my home screen. I didn't yes. think I cared. Yes. And now that I can, I, mm. you know, I think I've told you I have a dozen folders with all of my apps all properly organized. So I didn't think I was going to really like this that much. Turns out I love it. I love being able to have, I have my home screen has almost nothing but the widgets on it because I can. And it's, it's just neat to be able to have that stuff yeah. being interactive. And the fact that you can um, hide home pages so I can create an entire home page that's nothing but, but work apps. Yeah. And then hide it yeah. at five o'clock or whatever. Yeah. Like, I love that idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time Springboard's been updated in yeah. years. But finally, and it's, you know, people are going to say, well, Android's been doing that. But I think they do it a little bit more elegantly, frankly, than Android. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, I agree with you. That's a very nice feature. It's a, it's a big one. Yeah. And there's, there's little ones, too. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can. Find. And speaking of accessibility, this to me is absolutely incredible that this this is even technology that's possible. So when you have a group FaceTime, the person talking, their bubble becomes larger to let you know that you know yeah. this, the speaking person is Simple. is highlighted. Simple. So in iOS 14 and iPadOS 14, your um, the person speaking sign language <sighs> will actually become the larger bubble. It recognizes sign language and then em emphasizes that person's bubble. How incredible is what? that? How impressive is that? So even if you're in a group where some people are speaking with their mouths and other people are speaking with their hands, it recognizes that and gives that person the spotlight of the bubble. Wow. So that's really cool. Very yeah. cool. Jason Snell, is there anything you're excited about in iOS 14 or watch, what is it, watch OS 7? Yeah, um, a couple of years ago, we went on a road trip and we were in downtown Salt Lake City and all of the parking meters there are app-based. Oh, and I, I spent that. like a good five or 10 minutes uh, downloading an app and entering in my credit card information yep. while holding my phone and my yep. credit card and all of that. And, and then in order to get to pay to park. Yep. And Apple is doing this thing called App Clips, which is kind of like the slices idea that Android has tried and it really hasn't gone anywhere. But you know, Apple has proven that they're really good at popularizing stuff. So this may work. The idea is you scan a barcode or an NFC code, or actually you can even tap on items in maps or scan something on a table. There are like lots of ways to do it. And it automatically downloads a, a little mini app from the App Store and launches it. And so, for example, with that, uh, that parking meter, if the parking meter has a an app clip, which is what these things are called, if they support sign-in with Apple it. and they support Apple Pay, I could literally go, boop, tap my phone to the parking meter and go, sign-in with Apple, Apple Pay, done, and I've paid for parking. Without ever going to the App Store, without ever entering anything in, that's the dream. We'll see how it happens. The other way they described it is you could use it for Apple Maps to like order in advance before you get there, and it would just open an app clip and let you say, yeah, I want a muffin and a coffee, and you could go. You could even do it uh, if you wanted to embrace the app clip lifestyle, like put different codes on different tables in your mm -hmm. restaurant. And so then you oh, wouldn't even need yeah. to say like where you were or who you were. You literally just scan it and say what you want, and they know what table you're at because it was embedded it in the QR code or the NFC code that you that you scan. Living La Vida so, app clips. So and, it and might you, there's there's even customizable app clips. So you can have one one restaurant, let's say, that has a restaurant app clip, but also has the wine and beer app clip. Mm -hmm. Right, and <laughs> it goes the other way too, where if you're like somebody like Yelp. 
instead of it being a Yelp app clip, when you scan it at a particular restaurant that's using Yelp, it'll show up as that restaurant powered by Yelp. Right. But they get their branding and all of that in there too, which I think it's very clearly Apple talked to a lot of different uh, p- potential stakeholders about how to implement this, and they did a smart job of it. So, so why didn't Android slices, which are essentially the same thing, small bits of the app, that load as you need them. Why didn't that take off? I, you would know better than me. Uh, I would just say that Apple tends to be really good at marketing and both to j- the general public and to businesses and to its developer base. And therefore, this has got a, maybe a better chance of, of working than, than There's the always the thing. risk that people won't support it. But I have to say, it's very easy. I, I did play with writing one. It's not hard at all. And it's only, you know, it's limited to 10 megabytes, but yeah. the fundamental functionality. And, you know, one of the things that makes this work that perhaps Android didn't have down so much, Apple Pay. And Yeah, mm-hmm. if, you can, if you can put all of those things together, yeah. it's pretty compelling, right? And, and in the Apple, end, what do they Apple get out Pay. of it? They get money. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Apple gets 30%. Nice deal, Apple. Yeah, yeah and, the, and the parking meter gets people to pay right. easily and not get frustrated. And right. I think that's probably good, too. The other one I'll, I'll mention really quick is shortcuts. Um, we mentioned uh, the, the, that, that new back tap feature will launch a shortcut. Um, shortcuts are on the Apple Watch, which the previous app before it was shortcuts bought by Apple um, called Workflow mm. was on the watch and they took it off and it's back now. And and depending on how it's built, um, you can actually have shortcuts that just run on the Apple Watch and don't ever talk to the phone and they just do their thing. And you can save individual shortcuts as complications on your watch faces, not just a link to the app and then you tap the shortcut. You can actually pick a specific shortcut and put it on your Apple Watch, which oh, has really a lot. Good. There's a lot of potential there too. The Apple yeah. Watch is taking off. the The fact that we can now have our own custom complications alone uh, makes a huge, huge difference. Will I was a little worried because I'm a I do a show called Hands On Mac, which is Mac Tips, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to do some automator tips. And then I thought, God, I wonder if automator will be around much longer. <laughs> Are they going to, you think, replace automator with shortcuts on Mac OS at some point? I don't. I don't think replace. I think Automator is going to keep going because AppleScript is going to keep going. But in the long run, I, I I think I was surprised actually that Shortcuts isn't on the Mac yeah. uh, in, in Big Sur because yeah. I think it is coming and I think you will want to have it there. And then in the long run, I'm sure Automator and AppleScript will, will maybe fade into the background a bit. But they're bringing them over to ARM. So the, And I use they Automator are. every day oh, to do, like you said, shell scripts kind of stuff. Right. The best way to integrate in the Mac interface with stuff that's happening in the Unix subsystem is to build little tiny services plugins using Automator exactly. that just run shell scripts, and yeah. I love it. So that's still there. Um, but I, I use workflow, or sorry, shortcuts, workflows all the time <laughs> on my iPad, and I would love to do that on my Mac too. Well, and I think Apple Script is widely used in prepress and other places, and I don't know if Apple wants to lose those customers. So yeah. I mean, they're not killing a lot of this legacy stuff because they know their customers want it. And there's no reason to kill Automator and AppleScript. They're mm-hmm. not putting any effort into them, but there's no really real reason to kill them. And so th- I think they'll just keep them around. And and But I will say, having used shortcuts a lot on iPad, there are a lot of things that shortcuts is way better at than Automator. It's, you know, its limitations are mostly Mac versus iPad things. Like on, on the Mac, I can go to the command line and I right. can't really do that on the iPad. Right. I can go to some other device's command line using SSH, but I, I can't go to my iPad's command right. line because it doesn't have one. That's interesting. I would not mind having a comment, you know, having the three layers. You have Apple Script, you have Automator, and at the highest level, you have shortcuts. That could be a great ecosystem. Uh, All I got to do is run a like a do shortcut thing in Automator yeah. and a run an Automator thing in shortcuts, and you got it. You got yeah. a bridge. Yeah. yeah. Then you can then really the sky's the limit. All right, Dan, your turn. Uh, I'm excited by all of the sort of translation everywhere stuff that Apple is doing. Mm-hmm. So there's a translation app coming to the uh, to iOS. There's translation built into Safari. I mean, this is stuff obviously that Google has done with Google Translate and they've done it well for years and Apple is no longer content to sort of see that ground. But, you know, I think back to a few years ago when my now wife was working in India and I went and stayed with her for six weeks and I had to be there one day when the guy came to repair the air conditioner in the room and it turned out that he only spoke Hindi. And so I had to like call my wife at work and she had to put one of her coworkers on and we're like trying to navigate this phone chain. 
And, you know, I, I thought, well, it was so much easier, like technology should exist and it does exist, but how well does it work? So the fact that it can do all this and it can do it all on device as well, which I think is a big thing, you know, Apple's uh, pointing out the privacy aspects of that. I think that's kind of huge. So being able to just build that in and make it sort of a one click thing in Safari is a big deal, honestly, and and not just obviously being reliant to uh, Google's technology makes is great for Apple. Um, but it also potentially provides a uh, a good competitiveness for its users, right? Like in terms of uh, Google and Apple having to work a little bit more in order to make a good product. So I'm I'm really excited about that. I think that's potentially a, a really big improvement. Um, they've only got a few languages right now. I was disappointed the other day because I saw a tweet about one of my books and it was on a podcast in Swedish. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, I'll go to the website. I can translate it. And it doesn't support Swedish yet, oh. unfortunately. So that was one thing. Um, the other one I wanted to throw out there was, uh, it's funny, I was on, I think the last time I was on Twit was right before the corona. It was at the very beginning of the coronavirus because I remember us talking about, I think it was maybe when... Um, was it Mobile World Congress was canceled? Uh-huh. Uh, mm. And the um, the addition in WatchOS 7 of the wash your hands timer. I love that. <laughs> I love it. I do because I have become obsessive ever since yeah. I was on that show. With you. Oh, we got to wash your hands. All right. All right. 20 seconds every time. And so I love it's a clever little thing that Apple shows like, look, we we recognize that this is a thing we're all doing. Here's a something maybe we can do that helps a little bit um, push things forward and just making sure everybody's taking good care of themselves. Um, and you know, it's, it's clever. And so I, I really enjoy that a lot. I think that's a very fun and immediately useful thing that you can have. Yeah, actually, I appreciate their matting dance and cool down mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to uh, renaming, uh, what are they calling activity now? Fitness. It's fitness. Yeah, yeah. that's right. more appropriate. Uh, and, and I do think that, so they're listening, they're watching your hand motions. Apparently washing is an unusual motion. And then mm-hmm. they're also listening, for, they said for the squish of the soap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which is hysterical and then it puts up a little timer on you and to make sure that you uh, wash and it will and tell you, you stop yeah exactly it'll tell you oh, you got to keep going uh, so not done yeah. yet i wish they yeah. do something you're touching your face you're touching your face leo <laughs> oh, stop yeah. touching your yeah. face <laughs> i'll like an, just do it with a, my a other hand that's proximity all. sensor alert that just i think they could do that as it gets close to your face that's right like when your car right when you're back in your car in the driveway yeah there's also some <laughs> new um, uh, AirPods and AirPods Pro features coming. Um, mm. There's, there's, you know, ju- not just the spatial awareness stuff, but there's accessibility features that are going to be um, used uh, uh, beneficial with AirPods Pro, like um, opening up. Oh, you you can customize the EQ of your AirPods Pro based on oh. your hearing needs. So oh, you know, I like that. I have tinnitus, yes. so I I can't hear bright noises. It's right. it hurts me to hear bright noises. Right. So I my, I would EQ a little more bassy. My brother's deaf in one ear, so he would EQ it completely different. And and that all also can be customized through AirPods Pro with transparency. So when you're out and about, you can enhance. Um, the sounds of people talking or the sound like the environmental sounds around you. So you actually hear that better to protect you more when you're walking around outside. And there's um, there's so many there's so many amazing things coming. The alert um, you can set your That's iPhone to right alert machine. you if there's a smoke alarm going off or if someone rings a doorbell or if there's a siren going by outside. This is another accessibility feature, but it also can be helpful, you know, for for people just, you know, with everyday life stuff that that um, don't have accessibility needs, but it's just a benefit anyway. So lots and lots of good things coming. 